So should I have a mask on? Masks aren't really going to necessarily help. I mean, again, if, if you're practicing social distancing. But I'm, I'm talking about right here, man. I'm putting my life on, on the line. Should I have a mask on? Yeah, I mean, again, it's, it's more personal preference. If you're coughing into your elbow and not, you're not going to spread it, are you asking if other people are practicing good hygiene? If they have it and, and, and I can't tell and not have a mask on? The type of masks that are readily sold in pharmacies and stuff like that probably aren't the right type of mask. There's, there's your usual, the surgical mask. And it was called N95 masks, and those are the better ones to prevent this type of spread. N? N95. N95. Yeah, I mean, you can't really get those anymore. I mean, because they're, they're saving them all for a hospital, for, for healthcare work. What if I know people that know people that know people <laughs> and I have them? I don't think it would hurt, but sometimes that also causes a little bit of panic when, you know. If, if somebody comes into the shop, all of a sudden the barber has. All, all the barbers <laughs> have masks on. Base. Now, I'm a little confused on this part. Is it airborne? Yes, it's airborne. So in addition to contact, airborne is just basically droplet respirals that when you cough into the air, someone then inhales that. And that's why, that's why, that's where the six feet came, comes from. That coughs are very difficult to travel more than six feet droplets like that. Mm. And it could live for nine days, you said? On inanimate objects, yeah. Yeah. Thought about it too. You said that it could, it could jump seasons, so we get we get uh beat this for like the summer. Get back into things, and all of a sudden it comes back. And we can even be back where we started. Actually, so the Spanish flu in 1918 that killed estimates anywhere from 25 to 50 million people jumped seasons, came back, and the second part was actually worse. Worse? Yeah. The, the mortality rate was higher during the, the second wave um, in the latter part of the year. But that actually lasted more than a year and a half, the, the Spanish flu. That's why it killed so many people. But they pinned that on because of World War I, all the troops coming back and forth. That's why it spread worldwide. Because all the troops in, in Europe and US coming back and forth, they just brought it to encampments and spread like wildfire. So this has all been taped, right? Yeah, but I'm not. Okay. No, 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 I, I just, just got to do my disclaimer. Everything you've seen in this video is not endorsed <laughs> by Dr. Patel, Baycare Hospital, or TGH. <laughs> That's a little bit... Can we put the voice on it? That's good, yeah. <laughs> All right, y'all, we back at it again. Another video. Check this out, though. That was a quick conversation I had with one of my great clients, Mr. Patel. He's in the medical field, and he was dropping bars. Bars. And some of the stuff, I'm not going to lie, I didn't know. Hey, in times like this, I don't want to stay stuck to the news. I'm gonna freak the fuck out. I'm gonna freak out. It's gonna be too much. And I mean, we're not we're not shut down yet down here in Tampa, Florida. It might happen this week though. It might happen tomorrow actually, after tomorrow. So I'm prepping myself, embracing myself to be here, 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 here. But anyways, keep informing me on the comments below what's going on in your area. Oh, and by the way, if you liked what was mentioned by Mr. Patel in this video. Let me know also in the comments below. But besides that, guys, let's get into this video. J hits on the beat. All right, guys, so right now we're bringing out the skeleton trimmers to set the foundation of this haircut. We're going for a mid fade, all right? Um, and what I'm doing right here is making sure that everything is perfectly aligned for this haircut. I, I try not to, th to overthink it when I bald my client out. Shout out to my boy Malik, by the way, for stopping by and letting me record this haircut because um, it's a process to this day still. Now, this is what you gotta keep in mind about cutting clients that have curly hair. Some clients that have curly hair, for some weird reason, they don't break out. But the majority, in my experience, they do break out. So I will not be using the shaver, the foil shaver, on him. Instead, what I do is flip the trimmer around and I try to get it lowered by flipping it around. I mean, you can see clearly that he's broken out before. I don't think I ever used the shaver on him. I don't think I did. Nah, nah, it, it couldn't have been me. But if you zoom in just a little bit, 
you can see that he's had some bad experiences in the past that's hyperpigmentation on his skin on his scalp and I don't want to be the reason that he gets more of that so we're just gonna stay with the trimmers as we set the foundation for this fade now being that he has braids on top we're gonna make sure we comb and separate the hair that's going to be cut from the hair that shouldn't be cut I mean more than likely the hair that shouldn't be cut should be a part of the braids already but you know some people miss that you know when you do braids I ain't never done no braids but you know sometimes I don't know you miss out and as a barber you don't want to cut the hair that's supposed to not be cut so you don't cut it you separate it okay sometimes i even get a little bit of a, a little bit of pomade or something and i just move it to the side so we're combing down after we comb it down we're going to grab the number one and a half i have no idea why i grabbed the one and a half but the only thing i can think of is process of elimination and i thought in my head you know what let me start with the one and a half just in case but i promise you this we did not stop with that well, what do you know? Is our friend the number one guard taking the place of the one and a half guard? What can I say? We out here. <laughs> but to me, I think it was just me testing the waters. And it's weird because I've cut Malik for over a year now, but I've never I've never done it like this. This he's he's never rocked braids before, and I just wanted to find the best way to cut and have the best product for him. Because in the past, he wanted it dark, he wanted the, the the whole low ball fade, which to this day, I hate doing. I hate low ball fades. I'm not saying I shy away from them, but it's one of my least favorite fades of all time. I hope it changes. I hope I get to the point where I'm like, Boff. low ball fades all day. I got it, me, by myself. But that's not today. That's not today. Okay, so before we even get started on the stage, I went ahead and I sprayed the edge down. I sprayed it down with some hairspray and I'm wanting to do the edge before the fade because for some reason I could have a better idea of how to fade it, what angles to do it if the foundation for the edge is already there. I want to keep the C cup. I want to I want to not take away from the areas where you finish the the vertical bars right so it's something about framing the cut before you start the fade that makes it easier for me maybe not everybody but for me for me makes it a little bit easier so that's what we're going ahead and doing right now guys in the previous video asked what blade it was that I used on my senior since it's a it's the black blade and most of the blades that you see on a senior it's just like a silver looking blade right this is not even a wall blade at all this is a babless blade and I haven't taken the time to show how how it is that I put this blade on this clipper because off of the package you just you can't just put it on there's a there's a trick Right, and I think I said it before. I don't know why I feel like this is, I think I'm repeating myself. Did I mention this already? I don't know. But anyways, it's a Babylon's blade. It's a Babylon's fade blade. And um, yeah, I'm gonna make a video, guys. I, I, I promise, I promise. It's gonna, it's gonna happen. I got nothing but time now. I got nothing but time and I'm gonna make the time to show you. So we're fading out with the blade. We're making at least a, a half an inch section and we follow through with this section all the way around like like, like a typewriter. Um, there's times where I feel like I, if I do it in sections, I mean, I've done it and it turned out well, but it's, it's a little bit weird when you're not fully confident with the way you cut. So it's better to stay in order with your sections. So just go all the way around 
And once you move that lever, follow it all the way through. And once you move it again, follow all the way through. And once you're done with that section, start a new section and follow all the way through. Follow through. Right here, I left y'all some 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 very unique sounds since it's gonna be a while since we all get back to these sounds. And that's the sound of my son in the background. Again. So Renzo! So I never mentioned it before, but on the beard. I noticed that I like curving it versus just leaving a flat line and blending into the beard that way. Kind of like how you would curve it for a taper, it's the, it's the same for a beard for me. I like to do it, it just leaves a better effect. Um, I still make sure that both sides are high and the middle is low. Just think of a taper upside down. It's weird, but maybe it's not. I prefer it that way. You guys let me know how you guys do it. This is something I started doing maybe like eight months ago, and for some some reason I like it. My clients like it, they're happy, I'm happy, and we live then in a happy world in the barbershop. What can I say? What can I say? So guys, the same principle that I use for balding out on the head itself, I'm using for under the beard. I'm only going as low as the trimmers let me go. I'm not using a full shaver on my client here. Guys, if your client, it, like this, as my, my boy Basio would like to say, look at it as a resume. If you see scars, if you see hyperpigmentation, if you see bumps, don't add on to that. Don't make it worse. Like my man is going through it. You know what I'm saying? Like they're going through it. And the, this is the thing about it too. Like some clients won't tell you no. Some clients think that's normal. I literally have like been mind blown on how many clients just don't know that shaving their hair that low is the reason they break out. Guys, be the reason they know. Educate your clients. Let them know, hey, look, the reason you have this many bumps is because you've been shaving it low. For your hair type, I recommend going as low as the trimmers go. And tell them, look, buy some trimmers. Bring them through the shop. Tell them you'll set, set the blade for them. Because look, at the end of the day, they're not gonna cut their hair like you cut their hair. Show them some value. Go the extra mile, let them know, educate them. Let them know, hey, this is how you should take care of yourself while you are away from the shop. This is how you should manage. This is, this is the maintenance on your face. Because more than likely, a client's gonna just take care of their face, not their hair, not the, not the fade. They're not gonna go that far. I don't think that they're that bold, but everything else, especially their face, especially down here, let them know, man. Don't with, don't withhold this information.
it comes to the eyebrow action, y'all. I'm no guru. I do my best. With my boy Malik, he wants his eyebrows on fleek. Man, that rhymed. Um, <laughs> so right here, I didn't bring the length of the eyebrows down, but I did focus on how I arched them. Okay, so we need three tools when we do this, guys. Comb, trimmers, blades. Before you get started, you gotta comb that hair. So lining up with trimmers can be a little bit of a challenge. When you line up with trimmers and you got them right above the eyebrow, if your client moves up, if they move their forehead upward, let's just say that might be the end of their eyebrow for a few weeks. And you know, for those that know eyebrow growth, eyebrows don't grow like everything else, all right now? So tell your client to not move a damn muscle. Look, I'm doing your eyebrows, dog. Don't move. I'm talking about don't sneeze, don't talk, don't blink, don't do nothing. Close your eyes and relax. Relax, I do not need you to move right now, okay? And after you use the trimmers, you come back with the, with the shape, with the blade, you come back with the blade and you go to work. You go to work, you get the curves right. Some clients don't want that arch, others do. And if they do, go with it, you know? Go with it. If they want it, give them what they want. Don't judge, just give. Just give. Give. I must say, y'all, this edge up is crispy. Y'all know me. The ones that have been watching these haircut videos, which I don't have many, this edge up is crispy as hell. As hell. There's always room for improvement. I say it in every video. If there's room for improvement on this one, I don't really click, I don't see it much, but I, I don't doubt that there is room for improvement. But damn, this edge up is crispy. Just crispy. That's all I gotta say. And uh, aside from that, guys, uh, I'm coming back with my big ass freaking, I think these are like seven inch. Nah, these are like 10 inch. I think these are like 10 inch shears. Rarely ever use them. If I use them, I use them on an afro or on a situation like this where you're just trying to get the stragglers. Well guys, there it is. There's the haircut. Edge up is crispy. The eyebrows are on fleek. The beard game is strong. The stragglers are gone. And that's that's what I gotta show. That's what I gotta give. And uh, matter of fact, here's, here's what it looked the previous time. And you tell me what you think. You got before and you got the now. Which haircut do you think was better? I prefer the, the one that we focused on on this video more than the previous one that I didn't really show you, but this is what it looks like compared to the other. You guys let me know. But other than that, thank you for watching this video. Like I mentioned before, subscribe if you haven't. Make sure you hit that bell, that thing right now. Make sure you hit that so it lets you know when I drop a video, I'm gonna be dropping more often. Yo, shout out to my boy Jay Hicks for the incredible beats that he always blesses us with. And if you haven't checked his channel out, make sure you check out Jay Hits. We out here. Oh, um, I'm gonna be dropping another one soon, hopefully by Sunday. No promises. See you next time. Peace.